Good evening. Sometimes we get on our kids about reverence in the house of God. I'm just wondering how many of you enjoy a very quiet house? Always. Why not always? I've heard from parents that they would rather have a very messed up room in a very loud house with their kids inside than have a very neat and tidy house without them. I don't think our Heavenly Father is too far from there. That doesn't mean this is a playground, but it does mean that God appreciates our joy our gratefulness. And uh, we thank you very much for coming tonight and giving us the opportunity to worship along with you. <clears throat> There's an invitation that I'd like you to listen to, and it's straight from the Bible, book of Isaiah, chapter 55. The Lord is saying, Everyone who thirsts, Come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money in what is not bread, and in your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Tonight, please, incline your ear and listen to what God has to say for you. Thank you for coming to listen to all the students, all your children, and your relatives. But there's someone bigger, because this is not our house, this is his house. And he's got a plan for each one of you here. Please listen. Try to keep your eyes open to what God wants to say to you. And we all will be blessed. Let's bow our heads. We thank you, Father, because you have made provision for this time to come to your house. Fill us with your joy. Help us enjoy the music. Bring good memories to our minds from what you have done for our kids, for ourselves. Strengthen us, God, and remind us that our worst sins are nothing when your blood is poured out on us. Remind us that we are sinners but also remind us that we have a Savior who already paid for that. Cleanse us, Lord, and as the music plays, take our minds to a different place. Help us find in you rest, perfect peace, and help us live tonight so full of you, God, that we won't be able to deny you. We won't be able to hide your love and your kindness from anyone. We thank you for your love, and we pray for those who are still on the way. Let your angels be here, and your name be lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome.
We'd like to uh, share a set of two pieces with the strings. And the two pieces are both invitations, invitations to celebrate Jesus, our Savior, who is willing to come to this earth, take on humanity to save us. So bring a torch, Jeanette Isabella, bring a torch for Christmas, the traditional French carol, 
And it's all about, hurry, come see this wonderful thing uh, that was, it happened here. Let's come, come to the manger as quick as you can. And it's an, so it's this invitation followed by the carol of the bells and God rest you of Mary, gentlemen, which is also an invitation to come and worship Christ. So I, I hope when you, we finish this set, you will feel invited. And uh, Josh Kerming will play uh, violin solo on Carol of the Bells, and God rest you, Mary, gentlemen.
Do you feel invited? Yes. All right. Amen. All right. As the chamber singers come up, I want to invite you to picture in your mind uh, picture in your mind, what is that ideal Christmas experience? What is, that, what is it like? Do you picture the family around the, the, the fireside? Maybe it's Christmas Eve and you're reading the Christmas story and, you're, and you realize you know you're loved by God and that you love Him and you're surrounded by your loved ones. I invite you to have that picture in your mind as we sing Norman Lubov's still, arrangement of Still, Still, Still. And we'll follow that with masters in this hall, a rather fanciful, a fanciful um, carol that, that brings a really powerful message. It's like, it starts out with, there's, there's news and it's from overseas and it's good, good news. It's good news. And, uh, and that is Jesus is born for us. And uh, as, we, as they sing that, I invite you to think, the gospel is for everybody. Because it's not, this isn't like the angels appearing to the shepherd. This is news far, far, far away. The gospel is for everyone. So I invite you to meditate on those two thoughts as we sing, still, 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 and masters in this hall.
Well, concert choir is, uh, the rest of our concert choir joins, joins us. We're going to do a set of two pieces. And it's a very purposeful set. We'll start with Word Was God. And this is a piece we've been doing all, all year. And it's all school year. And um, it has a really powerful message taken from the first three verses of the book of John. And it reminds us that Jesus is divine. He's di he is the divine Son of God. He has every right to link humanity to heaven because he's the divine Son of God. The next verses that follow the, the verses that this piece shares is, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So the very next words that follow what you'll hear. The next piece we'll do is, uh, spiritual, Mary sat a rockin', and it's not, you know, rockin' out, it's rocking the baby. Do we have any mothers in here? Have you ever had those sleepness, sleepless, sleepness, that's not a word, sleepless nights uh, where you're holding the baby, keeping it, it's, maybe it's something that's not feeling well, and you, you had those nights, and you'll hear those tumultuous sounds of this kind of restlessness, and Mary sat a rockin'. And it reminds us that Christ was not just divine, he was fully human. And he, he had every right to reach down to humanity. Not only to pull us up to God, but to reach down to us. So we have, I invite you to think about the divinity and the humanity of Christ at Christmas. So we have, word was God and Mary sat a rockin'. And oh, you will hear a descant solo by Sarah Klingbeil. In Mary sat a rockin'. the work and 
Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was the same, was the Word that was with God, and the Word was God. The same beginning was the same, was the Word that was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, was the Word that was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, was the Word that was with God, and the Word was God. We'll close this, the choir portion 
with Creator Emmanuel. And once again, it brings us to the invitation. Will you come to the Savior? So, will we, come, will we come to the Savior? Imagine you were living in the time of the Middle Ages. Does anyone remember what's the other, the other name for the Middle Ages we commonly uh, refer to by? Dark Ages. Most, much of the Dark Ages, the Bible was proscribed, outlawed. Right, they're there. And um, outlawed, the Holy Bible. So superstition runs everywhere. And, and this uh, sense of uh, superstition and, and um, often hopelessness. And so people come to the church and they hear these words, Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. What do you think? I mean, it's a meaningful hymn for us today, a meaningful Christmas carol, but what do you think it was like for them back then when they never had the Bible? They just come and they get these words, Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Come, desire of nations. So it's an invitation. And they, um, it also pairs with another beautiful um, a chant from that time, Creator of the Stars of Night. An invitation to come to our Creator.
right, have, okay, okay. So, it's so good to be um, here tonight performing for you guys. I know, it's me once again. She ran across the gym um, back during the basketball game, and she said something during Parents' Day, but we're back again with the cow, okay? So we paid for the first cow. She's here, here and lovely. We have one cow down, but here's how it works. For the cow to produce milk, she has to be pregnant, right? So, we're here with a second one. She's pregnant now. We have to pay for the baby. <laughs> so, we're raising money for a second cow for the program. So, so these kids can actually, you know, get the milk to sell. Um, so, if you haven't heard of it yet, which hopefully you have, as a music department, we set our hearts to raise um, 750 for one cow, so f about 14, 1,500 <laughs> for both, sorry. And so we're just so excited to do this in this organization. Um, they are in the Dominican Republic. They take in orphan children and they take care of them. And for every cow that they get for a year, um, a year that cow's milk will buy them, uh, well, get them money so they can buy kids th these kids food to eat. And so they feed these orphans and they take care of them and they raise them. And people like us donate money to help them with this project because it's so important to help these kids. And especially around this time of year, um, it's the giving spirit. Um, we're really set upon us that God gave us the best gift we could ever ask for. He gave us Jesus. Jesus was born and he went through his life and he gave us his life. And so what is uh, $10 for a life? So who are we to say that these kids don't deserve to eat when we get to sit and eat all the time and we have the ultimate gift and that's the only thing we really need. So um, if you guys feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your hearts tonight to help these kids, um, I would say listen to him because he's a pretty smart guy. So I hope you have a wonderful night and thank you for um, enjoying this music with us. Oh, and it'll be in the back with this jug. Thank you, Serena and Austin. Don't know which career they're thinking of choosing, but one in business would be a pretty good idea. Have you been blessed? Wind Symphony is going to perform three songs, and we'll finish the program with that. And uh, the first one is going to be Fanfare and Odessa Fidelis. Uh, then you're going to hear O Holy Night. The last one should be on the Winter's Eve. Before I go to the last one, um, I'm going to share something. I'm going to wait until we get there. Um, Naomi, can you send that, please? Naomi is one of our three favorite trumpet players in the whole band. Um, she wasn't supposed to be here. Um, but she texted this morning saying, I'm on the way there, I'm ready to play, I practiced, I'm going to play. And she drove from 7 a.m., from North Carolina at 7.30. And she just barely made it, got into her dress, and here she is. I asked her why, and she said, because I, what? Because I love doing this. Because you love doing this. Um, that inspires, and that's one of your children. That's what keeps us going. 
when we see commitment. And just think about the Father. When the Father asks us to do something, our Heavenly Father, and we respond positively, that inspires Him to open the windows of heaven and pour on us blessings that we haven't even asked for. Keep these thoughts in your minds because we want to continue growing into a relationship with Christ. And I'll share something later uh, before we go to the last song. For now, please enjoy these songs.
Um, I'm shaking now to tell you what I'm going to tell you. But this has been on my mind for all this week, maybe a couple of weeks. And I'm literally shaking. <laughs> so bear with me, please. I don't want to get emotional, but I think it's time we stop looking so much about the first coming of our Savior and start looking towards the second one. I'd like to read you something. We are living in the most solemn period of this world's history. The destiny of Earth's teeming multitudes is about to be decided our own future well-being and also the salvation of other souls depend upon the course which we now pursue. We need to be guided by the spirit of truth. Every follower of Christ should earnestly inquire, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? We need to humble ourselves before the Lord with fasting and prayer and to meditate much upon his word, especially upon the scenes of the judgment. And don't get me wrong, this is not a prophet of doom. But when I was visiting prisoners um, a few years ago, one of the most amazing things for them in prison was the trial. If they were innocent, that was their passport out into freedom. And we are slaves to sin. The most amazing thing you can think of is judgment. Because it's when God is going to come and interpose himself between us and the Father and say, they are free because I paid for them. Why should we continue in slavery? We should now seek a deep and living experience in the things of God. We have not a moment to lose. Events of vital importance are taking place around us. We are on Satan's enchanted ground. Sleep not, sentinels of God. The foe is lurking near, ready at any moment, should you become lax and drowsy to spring upon you and make you his prey. And I'll try to tell you this with love, please. I, I, I make a lot of mistakes. And I'm saying this to both of us. Many are deceived as to their true condition before God. They congratulate themselves upon the wrong acts which they do not commit. And forget to enumerate the good and noble deeds which God requires of them but which they have neglected to perform. It is not enough that they are trees in the garden of God. They are to answer his expectation by bearing fruit. He holds them accountable for their failure to accomplish all the good which they could have done through his grace, strengthening them. In the books of heaven, they are registered as cumberers of the ground. Yet the case of even this class is not utterly hopeless. With those who have slighted God's mercy and abused His grace, the heart of long-suffering love yet pleads, Wherefore ye saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. When the testing time shall come, those who have made God's word the rule of life will be revealed. In summer, there is no noticeable difference between evergreens and other trees. But when the blasts of winter come, the evergreens remain unchanged, while other trees are stripped of their foliage. So the false-hearted professor may not now be distinguished from the real Christian. But the time is just upon us when the difference will be apparent. Let opposition arise, let bigotry and intolerance again bear sway, let persecution be kindled, and the half-hearted and hypocritical will waver and yield the faith. But the true Christian will stand firm as a rock, his faith stronger, 
his hope writer there in the days of prosperity. And I'll finish with this last one. Not until the day of final accounts will it be known how great is the responsibility of men in holy office and how terrible are the results of their unfaithfulness. Only in eternity can we rightly estimate the loss of a single soul. I wish I could say you guys have done the best choice of your life in sending your children to GLA. I wish all us teachers and staff would have a character so close to God that they could constantly see him in us. But we don't. Pray for us. The devil knows he has a short time. Next Christmas concert should be in heaven. I think God has been waiting for too long, and we know why. My friends, it's time to go home. Not supposed to make you cry today. Supposed to encourage you. There's no snow up there. <laughs> or it's warm, I don't know. But it is time to go home. Can I have a prayer before we listen to the last song? Let's bow our heads. God, thank you so much. We don't deserve anything. I don't know of a parent that would gladly allow his son or daughter to be killed to save a stranger. Help us understand what's in your heart for each one of us who turns their backs on you and prefer to serve your enemy, to be deceived, instead of coming to you and have life. Put in our minds your spirit, Lord, and do connect us to you like we've never been before. We have to have you in our hearts. Don't wait more, God. Do something in us. Wake us up. Shake us, Lord. Prepare us for that glorious day when you will come. And don't let us leave this place thinking we're okay with you. Make us uncomfortable, Lord, until our heart is pure and holy, just like yours. Help us to remain attached to the vine and receive from you all the nourishment that we need. Don't let us leave disappointed or discouraged because of our sins, but the blessed assurance that we are forgiven, that we are cleansed, that our record is gone, that we have now a, a blank page, and help us to let you write a story from now on. Thank you, Father, for your amazing love, for the gift of music, for the parents that commit to Christian education, for the staff members, for the students. Draw us closer to you, God, and help us be ready for that day when we'll see that cloud coming. And may we receive you in glory. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
hope you've been blessed. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to work with your children. It's a blessing every day. And um, yeah, we just, it's amazing. Parents are doing something right because these kids are, they're not perfect, but they're pretty well, pretty awesome and amazingly well behaved. So it's such a blessing. And thank you for those of you parents that have invested when they were younger in music and it make, makes a huge difference. And we're very grateful for that. I want to also um, say thank you to our, our su very supportive colleagues and it's amazing, but um, there's a whole host of, of teachers and staff that support us. We have driving buses and helping with organizing and, and um, just really, really grateful. Um, I don't, I'm afraid if I mention them by name, I'll miss someone because there's so many, but um, it's been an incredible blessing to have such supportive colleagues and, and it really helps tremendous amount and for that we're grateful and there's there's three individuals I do want to mention by name that have been such a huge blessing to the music department and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and I know um, representing also for my colleague Mr. Ballesteros and that would be Christiana and Juliana Dunn and um, Nathan Moravitz. Your support has meant a huge amount and uh, really really appreciate you guys. You're amazing and um, just, yeah, it's been huge. So it's a team, definitely a team effort. So thank you all so much for coming. May God bless you. May you have a wonderful holiday season. And please be safe on the roads when you travel back to your respective places. So let's close with a short prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you again for this chance to worship you with song and music. Thank you for each student each um, that we have the privilege of working with. And uh, I just ask now that you would send us forth with your blessing and filled with your joy. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you that are here tomorrow, some, there is a, and some of you know, but there is a piano recital um, in the chapel in the chapel so I'll make sure I'm in the right spot there's a piano recital at 2 p.m. in the chapel across the road God bless you have a good night